So before we get to the agenda, um, I did a little bit of reformatting to our uh, um, main page where we have the meetings listed. And um, so the meeting and the recordings should be accessible. Uh, today's meeting recording will be uploaded uh, once we're done. Um, okay, so going back to the agenda to, uh, for today. Uh -huh. Tarek, can, yes. can we include in the sort of the wiki area the current um, uh, WebEx so that you can just go there rather than hunt through mail or whatever and find it. Indeed. It used to be there, but it, it, it oh, it's been put back, is it? it? It's there, it's there, and it's been updated. So, okay. uh, depending on the discussion today, uh, so this, this, okay. uh, this section here is up to date. So whoever yeah, okay. accessed it should have uh, been oh, okay. able to okay. join. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. But, uh, but, uh, we need to discuss, uh, ongoing, you yeah. know, uh, activities. Okay, so today's agenda, uh, it's uh, mainly three points that we want to go over. Um, I'll try to go brush the action items. Uh, we don't have many, but uh, let's see. And then we're going to discuss the allocation of m and label. And uh, of course, the open design team meetings, uh, uh, future ones, and any other business. If uh, people want to add anything else, let me know. Okay. <clears throat> Don't know why. Uh... Oops. I think I busted the thing. Uh... Okay. I'll jump to the first item, uh, but please allow me a second to. Uh... Share the right one. <clears throat> For some reason. Ah, okay. All right, so this is the action items uh, wiki that we keep tra track of open and closed action items. So we've brushed, uh, we've actually tackled most of the action items. Uh, some of the new ones may come in, but uh, in terms of what's outstanding, um, we have uh, mentioned this generic delivery functions uh, um, draft or idea proposal. Um, and the last we updated was uh, um, Greg as a co-author. Uh, there was some outstanding work in um, May Target presenting IETF 116. Um, just uh, I did a, a quick search on the draft. I think it is expired right now, so I'm not sure what is the plans. Uh, you know, moving forward on this. Uh, um, hopefully, Greg can give some insight. Um, I didn't get a chance to um, talk with Jeffrey, and um, let me take this uh, action. Uh, I'll reach out and um, get the feedback uh, on the mailing list. Okay, so that's it for open action items for now, and we'll go back to the agenda. And the first uh, we have is a discussion on the m and label led by Stewart. So he has some slides to share. And I'll hand him over the presentation mode. Oh, I'm going to share. Yeah, I just... Uh... See if I can find the right thing to share. This one here. So that should be sharing. Yep. yep. Yes, I Thank can, you. can see it. All right. So first off, a preliminary note. 
um, this is a preliminary discussion in a design team. Uh, we will report this discussion to the working group um, as a whole, the NPS working group as a whole, and the final sort of conclusion on this topic will be determined by the NPLS working group as a whole. Of course, that's not the process. Um, our job is to advise in this discussion is to advise the chairs. The chairs will make a decision and the decision um, will be confirmed by the area director. So we have a request. The request uh, that we have is an early allocation of a special purpose label for um, the uh, MA header draft, formerly known as draft jags or colloquially known as draft jags. Now, the problem is that this is a base special purpose label um, uh, request and there are only 16 possible values and of those 16 only eight remain so this report resource is so valuable that we absolutely must make the right call but the process that we need to follow to cause the early allocation is described in rfc 7120 most of it is easy and, and okay but the one question we need to focus on, the one key issue we need to focus on, is section two, bullet C, which says the specification of these code points must be stable, i.e. if there is a change uh, implementation, if the, this doesn't quite read right. If there's an implementation based on the earlier version and there is a change, um, then later, later uh, versions built on the later specification must be seamlessly uh, interoperable uh, between them. So what this is saying is that we've got to get it right now. So the, and the chairs are really seeking input in deciding if this condition is met with the existing M&A um, um, header draft. So here's the problem. If they do allocate, then significant aspects of the protocol are set in stone. If the design is right, i.e. condition 2C is met, faster time to market um, results and there is much happiness. If it turns out that 2C is not, met, is not met, we have the potential for a wasted SPL and an orphan design in the wild. If the chairs do not allocate the, or agree to the allocation at this stage, then there are, then there are some risks. All right? The development um, will stall and there will be much unhappiness. Um, there's also a risk that SPL code point camping will take place, possibly more than once. So what we have to do to determine is there is the community sure that the degree of permanent stability required in condition 2C is met. There are some alternatives that we can consider. For example, we could um, do their early work, prototyping and early deployment on an ESPL. We have a huge number of ESPLs, many more than uh, we have SPLs, and we could afford to burn a few of them making a mistake and learning about how this design should work. So that would mean if we use one of those, there is no risk to MPLS in the long term. So we could just go ahead and, and allocate one uh, without much further discussion. But the consequence will be that the stack is larger. And that will mean that some hardware platforms will not be able to use the uh, ESPL approach. Processing will be slightly slower than an SPL because it's two labels, and it all, but it all depends on the implementation, whether that is, is significant. And we will probably need to migrate to a proper SPL at a later date with all of the migration risks and all the migration hassles. What else might we do? We might see if we can reuse an existing SPL in some compatible way. This is messy, but it is, it is perhaps possible. We need to, to, to look and see if we could do it. Or we could allocate one of our SPLs, one of our precious SPLs, as an experimental SPL. There isn't an experimental one at the moment. Then this would have the consequence that all future experiments would use the same SPL. So there is a problem of clashing experiments. But if you read the, uh, the RFCs, uh, experiments are not supposed to be run on a production network. So this would give it the ability to try it out, to test whether our m &A design would work, possibly on fairly large scale, but um, it's only supposed to be uh, an experiment and someone else is allowed to run an experiment. Although the characteristic of MPLS, of course, is that so long 
as they're on a different LSP, then you can run the same experiments in the um, in the network. Um, but there is also the other side of this, which is there's a possibility of an, one of the quotes experiments quotes de facto requisitioning the experimental label due to its wide scale deployment. And the, the risk is that the standard and the experiment diverge if we, we, we adopt a, um, uh, a standard approach to, uh, to the design. Uh, perhaps we could use a platform label. Uh, a prototype might be based on a platform or global label. In this, all participating nodes in the network agree on a single value of 16 or greater with the MNA semantic. We know from SR that there is no label range that all platforms can use, however. And we would know that we would have to migrate to an SPL uh, eventually. But we could learn about the design without any risk of wasting an SPL. Migrations, of course, are always messy, but that's true whichever way we go. So what's the uh, way forward? Is it objectively certain? Are we um, quite certain that condition 2C is met with the existing design? If so, then the chairs can proceed with the early allocation process. If not, should they wait for greater, greater clarity or should they proceed with an experimental alternative to gather uh, evidence uh, on the quality of the design? If so, uh, what alternative? Or should they do something else? So what are your thoughts, please? Um, that's what I had in the way of preamble for this. Hello? Yeah. yeah. Just making sure I still have you all. Yeah, you're st uh, we still hear you. And uh, the, the Tony, I, I think, has his hand raised. So go ahead. Thank you. Um, we've been working on MA for more than two years now, and everybody oh. seems to be inclined on moving forward. Um, I see no reason not to go ahead and allocate the BSPL now. Uh, the details underneath the, the m and design are fairly solid. There's lots of code points underneath that need to be worked out, sure, but those don't require that we change the BSPL. Thank you. Any other opinions? Lower. Yeah. So Tony, the when we made, I actually had pretty much the same view on this before I started it, started to discuss it with a couple of people in the working group and later by the shares. Uh, I think the crew is that uh, there are code points, as you say, under the BSPL. And they actually affect the overall specification or the behavior uh, on a when you have a BSPL in the packet. And as I understand it correctly, this is what people are concerned about is not stable. Uh, but I would like to uh, encourage kind of everyone to actually voice their opinion here. I, I like, like to hear it as a working group chair before I, we decide how to go ahead. Yep, thanks. Um, okay, I think you're out the queue and Tony, you're at the head, go ahead. So, well, uh, you know, m &A is intentionally designed as an open standard where we can add actions later on. If you're going to wait until all actions are well defined and all the act definitions of every single action are all set in stone before we move forward, then we can't ever move forward because we intentionally aren't setting things in stone. We have enough to move forward that we can start implementing. That's all we need. And we should just let that happen. Okay, Stuart. I, I, I sort of agree with Tony's sentiment that we um, we can't possibly wait till the end of the design. This is just a, a discussion that we need to have to make sure 
that the front end of the design um, is sufficiently stable that um, we can safely allocate this incredibly rare resource. That's the that's the thing the thing we need to um, to understand, um, and that there's um, no gotchas in the back in the rest of the design that are going to cause us to um, regret the decision. So it should really just a a check that we think we've got enough of this um, good at the moment that we can just press the button and recommend that uh, Andrew does the allocation. So, Go ahead, Loa. Uh, so, Stuart, what, or maybe anyone else, uh, what is the criteria before uh, saying that it's stable enough? Uh, I'm, I'm a bit uh, uncertain. I'm not sure there is a good criteria. It's the judgment. You know, it, it comes down to the at the end of the day, the judgment of the chairs and the judgment of the uh, of the AD, uh, both of whom have to um, um, concur. Um, no, and, and under normal circumstances, um, I wouldn't give this uh, you know a second uh, a second thought. The only reason I'm of a, I think it's worth just taking this extra slight pause. And if we are convinced that it's all, all fine, then I'm absolutely happy with that consensus because there are only eight of these values left for the eternity of the protocol. And we could, for example, um, use some other method, such as using an ESPL to learn about the design. Okay, I guess Loa, your hand is down and I'll go next. So uh, somewhere I, I read uh, in the RFC for IANA allocation, uh, the, uh, the rules and the policy that once allocated uh, changes proposed have to be backward compatible. So um, are we in a position to, you know, I, I don't want to call it locking ourselves. Uh, um, are we comfortable to say that uh, any changes in the future that we propose will or must be backward compatible? Uh, that is the, you know, that's the ask is uh, right now is do we see any changes that could come and break compatibility? Um, otherwise, I'm, I'm also on the side of, you know, uh, it's mature enough uh, to the extent that it's almost I'm, I'm, ex I'm comfortable with allocation uh, that's it i just wanted to draw your attention on backward compatibility and and i think loa is next in the queue okay uh yes asking about what actually what do we actually mean by uh, backward compatibility here uh, one thing is clear that uh, some new development can't change the old one but it can be kind of non-overlapping. So it, it's not what we really normally mean by, by backward compatible, compatibility. Well, well I, the, 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 the key text is the specification of these code points must be stable, i.e. if there is a change, implementations based on the earlier and later specification must be seamlessly interoperable. interoperable. So are we convinced, this is the only question we need to decide, I think, um, are we convinced that the specification as written at the moment is such that um, if we were to make any likely change, it would be backwards compatible with uh, what we have today? That's the only question. Now, I think Tony is suggesting that because the, um, the, um, uh, we do we do it through um, uh, code points inside, then um, then we're fine. So I guess the question we've got is, um, have we got enough space to allocate um, code points for the future? And does the rest of the uh, design before we take the first um, action um, code point, uh, is that fundamentally stable for all time? But if we're good with that, I think we're good.
So uh, <clears throat> I'm raising my hand and I'll ask this uh, a different way. Can we decouple the uh, the MNE indicator uh, or label uh, from you know the the code points of the encoding of in stack data and post stack data? Uh, at least, and uh, in, in, you know, from design discussions, they we know that we need the indicator, and the rest is still, you know, we we still haven't allocated anything further uh, for those code points. So, do we need to nail everything to be comfortable with the MNA label? That's what I'm trying to say. I think they're decoupled. So, can I ask the current authors of the um, the header draft, um, for example, Yax and Rakesh, do you have an opinion? I know you have, but you can you uh, work on it a bit? Go ahead, Rakesh. Um, oh, sorry, uh, I joined meeting uh, late. So I might have missed something I said earlier, but um, uh, I think that the the backwards compatibility and uh, things like that is about the, uh, the location of the bits and flags that's defined. And uh, we have defined very minimal set uh, in the draft right now. So from that point of view, um, I do believe um, uh, there is uh, it, it should be extendable and we should not go back to changing anything uh, instead of saying seven bit of course let's make it six bit or eight bits and things like that so uh, and a u bit or p bit or any other bit location that we may have said in the draft we should uh, keep it as is so from that point of view i think uh, we have spent a lot of time uh, discussing this and it's stable enough to go for the early allocation for the bspl so that's my opinion Okay, Loa. Uh, so, Rakesh, there are at least three reserve bits in the MA label today. I have a proposal in, in the draft today. Is there any chance that uh, when we actually allocate those for different purposes, that we actually get into a situation where we would, would have liked to do something different. Yeah, I mean, it's a speculating right now, uh, Loa, right? Uh, we oh, don't yeah. Know oh, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. But we can't speculate on how big the risk is. I make a proposal. Go yeah. ahead, Stuart. Um, maybe one or more of those reserve bits should be a version bit and that would give you the that would give future designers the ability to use the uh, mna label for some other purpose or redesign this header if we needed to so for example if bit um 20 20 was version then uh, we could spin a completely new design by making that uh, a one do i go ahead uh, yeah it's possible however uh, it only allows us two versions well, well you, i mean if if we, we can make a judgment call on how many of the reserve bits we sequester for this um, yeah, that, that's the other one. We only have three reserved bits, and uh, if we actually put one or more for a uh, version, we are not having very many for other purposes. Well, do we need them? I think uh, since we haven't reached a decision on PSD yet, then mm. Uh, we probably need one of those bits for indicating PSD. That's what the, that's what bit four does. Bit oh, it, uh, bit uh, twenty four does, doesn't it? Uh, I might have read it wrong. I, I need to check. 
Okay. Okay. Um... Oh, hang on a second. Yes, the numbering is a bit strange in figure two because it numbers up to eight and then renumbers up to eight, whereas normally you find them in um, in decimal numbers. So I was using the wrong the wrong bit number there, but reserved is the one I was thinking. One or more. Can you clarify are... which reserved bits are we talking about? Is it the, the one next to the S bit, or the one uh... next to the the one next to the S bit? Yeah, what about the other ones? Are they open for you know being assigned to different roles? And I, d I don't know if we closed on that. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, Stuart, do you have anything to add? Or no, no, I no. That's what I, what, just what I wanted to say. I'm sorry if I jumped the queue. No worries. Uh, Rakesh, you're next. Uh, just to add to it, uh, some of the reserve bits could stay reserved for now. And if there is ever, um, I mean, six or 12 months from now, we realize uh, some major version is required, then we can discuss and see how it can be done. Um, uh, and reserve bit could be one option, but maybe for now, uh, we don't need to uh, say that this is reserve bit uh, because then we may corner ourselves if we need uh, them for something else and we don't need the reserve, uh, sorry, version number. Okay, Greg, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I think that uh, Rakesh proposal uh, is uh, practical and pragmatic. So um, I agree with Law. Um, it's better to keep um, their bid that for uh, possible use uh, in PSD. Um, and uh, that leaves us, as I understand, uh, with a uh, bid field of three continuous bids that are currently reserved. So um, if we really find out that um, need to redefine their uh, header, then um, it can be used for uh, versioning. So, uh, I would say I would be comfortable with, uh, um, going ahead with assigning special purpose label and, um, then, um, we, we are flexible enough. We have enough space, uh, if, uh, we need to really have a, a new, uh, version of the header. Thank you. Okay. Stuart, go ahead. I propose doing it the other way around because the trouble is that there'll be people who forget this conversation in a year or maybe two years time or whenever that we um, allocate them to version now or some number of them to version now then a later design uh, or a later change can argue for changing that but of course the the tripwire will be there and people will um, um, end up trying to sort of work out whether it's a risk of destroying the versioning mechanism or whether it's safe. But I think we need a tripwire in there because if they're just as reserved, they'll probably get um, um, swallowed up with something without anyone thinking about possible consequences. You can, of course, you know, convert them to something else at a later stage, but at least we'll have to, the tripwire will cause people to think about it. Okay, uh, Jag Jagan, go ahead. Hey, um, uh, just curious, like, you know, um, uh, even in future, right? So if you want to um, add add any uh, bits, right? So we can use some uh, specific opcodes, you know, like, uh, and then we can extend those. And that could be the part of uh, the format B, um, so that, you know, like we can uh, add additional, uh, um, I think 13 bits of uh, flags or header. Uh, back to Stewart. Yeah, so so I think we may or may not be on the saying the same thing here. Other flags can definitely go in an opcode. There's no question. Great idea. Absolutely fine. But those reserve bits are so fundamental because they're what everyone will look at first. 
and you haven't even got to understand it, it, it may be that you know, the whole uh, flags mechanism gets uh, or, or the opcode mechanism gets changed but uh, you could do that if you had a version in there so okay. we may or may not be agreeing yeah Rakesh go ahead um, uh, so we are we brainstorming and um, and one other idea uh, is um, is also to use the one bit from the MNA label and say that's an extension of the MNA label and now you have next 30 bits to do any of future extensions uh, and any control stuff that we may need uh, so that could be another idea just brainstorming uh, and that we just need to reserve one bit for it for now and just leave it at that Okay, Tony. Thank you. Um, I think we said somewhere that if we could reuse the version bits, if we decided we didn't want them, um, I don't think that's actually possible. If we move forward with version bits, somebody's going to hard code that. If the version doesn't match, the packet's discarded. Uh, you're just going to have concrete poured on the version bits right away. Yeah, I tend to agree. Uh, I, I'm next, so I'm, ask, I'm going to ask for clarification what we're talking about again. Um, so we are uh, talking about assigning a uh, MNA label, and uh, there are bits in MNA label itself that can be used or reserved for other things. We're not talking about what follows the MNA label or what headers follow. Uh, but in the MNA label, there could be bits that we can leverage. Um, to me, there are multiple bits there. There is the, uh, um, you know, the traffic class bits in the, uh, in the regular label is the TTL field. And, you know, uh, they could be uh, left alone or could be reused for or repurposed for a different thing. But I just want to clarify that we are talking about these bits and not other bits. Thank you. And I think Loa is next in the queue. I just want to make sure that I got this right. Uh, so we are actually talking about uh, the bits in section 4.2 marked res for reserve. And my take is that that's three bits. And my take is that if we are going to do PSD, then we need one of those bits actually to indicate that there is PSD following the stack. Is that uh, correct? Maybe one of the authors can. Uh, yeah, so like if, uh, I'm just answering like uh, in the 4.2, right? So there is an uh, R bit which is closer to the data portion. So that is what, you know, like um, we were thinking to use it for the um, uh, post uh, data. Uh, okay, so we actually have four bits that we can. Exactly. Uh, okay, thanks. So, so the, middle, have... the middle three bits uh, have been used. Huh? And you, you actually already kind of assigned the yes. R bit for PSD. Correct. correct. If, it, if it ever happens. Yes, that's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, uh, one more thing I want to clarify because uh, I don't know, uh, Tarek, I'm in the next in the queue or? Um, uh, you are after lo lower. Uh, okay. I'm done. I understand okay. what, where, where I miss. Okay. Oh, the okay. Stuart in you. Okay. And I think I'm. Yeah. Using... So, uh, okay. So, Tarek, actually, that's a very good point, you know, like. Uh, uh, the 4.1 is the one uh, we are talking about currently, right? Exactly. Yeah. That is yeah. what I was. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I was pointing 4.1, yes. and yes. Uh, yes. and Loa was so. uh, looking at 4.2. Okay. And so. I think the discussion that uh, Stewart started was with respect to the MNA indicator itself. And okay. I want to yeah. bound this discussion, and maybe sure. it's open. I don't know. Yeah. So here, actually, like uh, uh, um, our proposal is that we are not going to touch any of the bits in the TC bits or TTL bits in the 4.1 because of the backward compatibility. And then we discussed this one before. Uh, so all the things we want to touch is only after that. So um, the, uh, the uh, assignment of this uh, label is not going to change 
in my opinion. Okay, so we... I, I, I think I am next, so I'm just going to comment on that. I'm fine with uh, putting anything after the MA indicator or MA label and discussing that. But for, for now, I think uh, we're talking about the SPL itself. Do we need to uh, version it? Uh, do we need to version the SPL or not? And if we want to version the SPL, then where does the version go? Uh, I wasn't thinking of versioning the SPL. I was thinking of versioning the the, uh, the thing that followed the SPL. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that clarifies then. That goes in what's in section four. 4.2. 4.2, figure two. Um, my proposal is um, that um, I hadn't noticed you've changed the P to an R, but anyway, that that, that either uh, the R bit or the res bit include a, um, a version bit um, that uh, distinguishes this structure from any other structure we may choose to follow that um, SPL that we're going to allocate. And how many bits do you need for version? Well, one's a good start. Okay. Okay, back to the queue and Jimmy is there. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Actually, I was a little bit uh, confused by the Rick's point about the uh, versioning in the SPL itself. I tend to agree that if we need a version number, it may be encoded in the label stack and following the SPL. But this is will be similar to what we have with the control word or the uh the, the GAL GSH format. We can have a version uh with with the label stack and after the, the post stack uh data format with uh following the Scale label, right? That is something similar to what we trying to uh, discuss here. If we need a version number, maybe that is a possible approach. And, uh, so far, I'm not sure whether we we can directly use one or two bits as a version number. We need to maybe have more discussion about it so that uh, we can make a right decision for the long term. Um, extensions in the future yeah thanks okay thank you i uh, i will clarify so um we uh, we started to talk about the uh ayana um, allocation for the the special purpose label for m a and um we didn't talk or at least i'm not aware that we want to start uh, allocating opcodes uh for the headers that follow and in section 4.2, we have to allocate multiple things, including the opcode, and then we have reserved. So, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if we uh, are ready to allocate opcodes or not. That's, uh, and that's what I uh, got confused about. And Stewart is in the queue. So, so I, I'm not talking about opcodes. I'm, um, I'm talking about the structure, let's make sure we're all on the same page, we're talking about the structure that follows uh, this reserve label, which in some ways defines what actions are going to happen as a result of seeing that reserve label. And the proposal, which I think G uh, was, um, uh, was, 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 was also expressing there, is that we sequester some number of those bits, and it's unfortunate they're not labeled in the normal sort of way um, uh, that we sequester one or more of those bits as being a version number that way uh, if ever we need to make any changes we can make those change without having wasted the previous label So, Stuart, on this, so um, right now the structure is defined uh, of what follows after, at least in section 4.2. This is what I'm looking at. Yes, yes. Section 4. I'm suggesting a small change in section 4.2 yeah. that allows us to create 
4.2 bis at some stage in the future should we find it necessary. When we get to the end of this project, we may possibly un, um, unreserve the bit, uh, the, uh, the version bit, but at this stage going forward, I think it would be wise to have some form of versioning in there. Okay. Okay, we uh, we have. So, what's the what, what are we going to record for the rest of the work for the for the working group here? So, one thing we talked about is to recircle back the minutes that we uh, produce from this meeting to the working group, and then seek consensus or try to seek consensus. Um, do we have a conclusion from this discussion, or do we simply record that? Um, um, there was broad consensus to allocate uh, the, uh, the, the the SPL, but some discussion remains about whether versioning is needed in Figure Two of Section Four Point Two. But wait, wait a minute. Uh, sorry, Tony. I just jumped in the queue. Uh, are you saying that we can assign what's in uh, Section Four Point One? But we leave section 4.2 open for discussion. Uh, that's my understanding as well. Yeah, so 4.1 is an ordinary SPL, yes? An yeah. SPL standard format. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to change that, I don't think, are we? Um, but once you see, um, you know, label 12 or whatever it is in there, then you know that what follows is going to be a figure two, because that's the way the design is set up. And the question is, should some number one or more bits within figure two be defined to be a version so we could have an alternate figure 2A if that is what we decided we needed at a later stage? So, um, okay, yeah, sorry, Tony, go ahead. I get back in the queue. Thank you. Um, I would like to point out that the process here is apparently not what you think it is. The question on the table is to the chairs. The chairs need to make a decision. No consensus is necessary, nor welcome. The chair should make a call. So, Loa, go ahead, and I think I can comment as well. Okay, yeah. I fully understand that uh, the chairs will have to make the call. Uh, what I said in the uh, agenda for today is that we actually, what we're looking for is actually input, because uh, after discussion we had uh, earlier both with uh, members of the uh, working group and uh, between the chairs. It's, we, at least I wasn't entirely sure what, what we wanted to do. Okay, uh, Tony, go ahead. Okay, so you have our input. Is there anything else that you would like to hear from us? Okay, and I will uh, second my feedback is, uh, I mean, the questions that Stewart raised were uh, the Im input that the chairs wanted to use to uh, decide on the allocation, specifically the 2C point that he went through and uh, get a sense of stability on the proposal. And uh, I think we have some input and uh, we need to discuss it further now. Mm. But, uh, you know, the, on the points of minutes, I think uh, we will produce minutes and share it on the list and, and, you know, people are free to comment on it and or not. Thank you and Loa, you're back, back to you. 
Uh, so my question, the only question I have just now is actually, if we leave the LSE following the MNL, MNA label uh, not really decided upon, uh, could we say that the MNA label allocation is uh, stable stable enough to actually make it did anyone understand what I was asking uh, maybe repeat it again Noah I, I, what I'm saying is that 4.1 what's in four, section 4.1 seems to be stable it shouldn't be changed uh, the if we haven't agreed on 4.2 entirely. Is this still in a position to assign uh, the MA label itself? And that was actually my my starting point. So I kind of returning back there. But I would like to hear if there are opinions or Opinion, opinion different from that. Okay, and I have some feedback on this. So once we assign uh, a label for 4.1, it, it automatically means that whatever we define in 4.2 follows. In, in its current format, or maybe in a future, or we can revise it. But it means that we're locking the value for 4.1 for what follows, and uh, and we cannot change it to some other feature in the future. So, the label means M and A label. And I um, I'm mixed on who's next. It's either I Tony it's, or Stewart. I think it's Tony. Tony, okay. Tony, Tony, okay. Tony, Tony I agree with I agree with Tarek. The, once you choose the BSPL, you're going to basically mandate the, the, the use of 4.2 uh, and everything after that is certainly malleable. Um, we can go devote bits to versioning, but our history with versioning is pretty poor. Um, you know, we do lots and lots of protocols and never bump the version number. Uh, so uh, in my mind, it's basically a waste of bits. And we will not be able to reclaim them. Stuart? I turn. was all right with Tony until he said you couldn't reclaim it. Uh, and there are, there, are, there are occasions where we have um, um, used versions. I think we are more likely to regret not having a version than having a version. But that's a judgment call. Rakesh? Um, yeah, I agree with Tony. Uh, I think uh, once we uh, allocate uh, uh, the BSPL, the subsequent, uh, the second um, LSE, the encoding is kind of uh, decided. Uh, but having said that, there are reserve bits that still available to extend it however we want. So in future, if we decide uh, six or 12 months from now, the three bits that's reserved, we want to use it for version or whatever that we need it for, it's still backwards compatible. So I think uh, we will not be cornering ourselves by assigning a BSPL today. Loa? Yeah, I think I agree with Rakesh. Uh, the, um, it's okay to say that, yeah, we actually, uh, say that uh, we, if we assign the MA label as in 4.1, we're actually also implying that we are going with that in 4.2. However, there are reserved bits, at least four of them as, as of now. Uh, and then uh, those could actually be assigned for whatever we want to assign them for. That is, Rakesh, that is what you said also, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, good. Thanks. Okay, Greg. Um, 
Yes, uh, I, Tony is right that uh, we have not been uh, uh, using versioning uh, very often. Although I have an example, a uh, recent example that DeathNet used um, their ACH uh, versioning to define the DeathNet ACH format. Uh, so it, it helps uh, very rarely, but nevertheless. Uh, what I think is that, um, and look for your uh, suggestions, uh, is it the way that uh, this reserved bit, uh, or maybe you'll help me, uh, definition uh, would require uh, a document? So basically, uh, as we do in IANA registries, so that we specify that uh, some values can be um, requested uh, an RFC, so IETF process. Uh, at least that that way uh, we can uh, leave some uh, history in the document saying that uh, this might be used um, in the future for versioning. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And uh, I think Jimmy is next and then Stuart and myself, maybe. Okay, uh, I have one clarification question. So if we have this uh, reserve base not uh, defined in the beginning, could we make it a uh, version number later? That the, that the original version of the implementation will not treat it as a version number. I think just the chat whether it's possible to redefine it as a version number in the future when we think it's, uh, it is needed. Okay, and Stuart, you're next. So there's a problem in the text that stops us using these version numbers. The text at the moment says these bits must be must be transmitted as zero, absolutely fine, and ignored on receipt. Uh, to make them a version number, you would have to make them transmitted as zero and checked on receipt. And then, but that would not prohibit you from later on writing another, you know, an update to this, um, to this specification that uh, changed that definition. But while they're, while they're ignored on receipt, they cannot be used as a version number because they won't, uh, they won't uh, go through the tripwire. Okay, I have raised my hand, I think, after Stuart, uh, so let me know if I'm mistaken. So my, 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 my comment is, so we have def defined an encoding in section 4.2, and we have a place where we have reserved bits. So even if we put a version there, is it, are, we, are we comfortable changing, the, for example, the boundary of our code? It's right now seven bits. Are we uh, are we able to change it to eight bits if we change the version? And that's my concern. Is we've set in stone the encoding, and even putting a version there does not allow you to change the current encoding, does it? So uh, I don't know if versioning, even in its current form, if we seat it inside the reserved bit. It's uh, totally than me, so I think. So if you uh, take issue with Stuart first, um, if we have the reserve bits set as must be zero and must be ignored on receipt, that actually allows us to do versioning. Um, we can now set a version bit to one and write version one to say thou shalt check the version bits and version zero is clearly previous version and version one now allows us to move forward and the legacy implementations will not check, and that's fine. And that means that we do have to be a little bit careful about not writing things in version one that are not backward compatible, but you can do things, okay? To Tarek's point, yes, you could go ahead and allocate more points to opcodes, um, but it's probably not necessary because we did reserve an opcode for extension so you could actually play games with that there. You don't actually have to change a version number. 
Uh, I'll just comment back. So uh, I, I, the, the opcode, um, you know, being at seven bits right now, and if we want to change it, uh, was an example. So, but the point is, um, the version doesn't help change the boundary of the LSE uh, encoding, does it? Like the way it is set is, uh, for example, NAC, NASL is four bits, and that's locked, even if you change the version. That's locked because we have the U bit adjacent to it, and we can't really do anything about that unless we want to rearrange things. But if you wanted to increase the NASL, yes, you could conceivably, you know, I, I would suggest rearranging things now so that the NASL continued to be contiguous. Uh, but if you did that, you could conceivably do this with a, by bumping the version number. Okay, Stewart, you're next. So I, I think I, I disagree with Tony's notion of back, you know, um, of, of safety here. If um, you require to check that, um, I wish you'd numbered these consecutive in, in, in standard format, but the, the bit to the right of the S was a zero, then a an old implementation seeing the one there would ignore the rest of the um, the. Um, uh, would ignore the whole thing and decide that it was malformed or it couldn't do anything with it. So that is safe that an old implementation is not going to mis, uh, misunderstand. If you set it to um, zero, I think you're compelled to keep pretty well everything here, including the NASL and the opcode, exactly the same for an old implementation. So I think the only only by requiring that the version is checked can you be safe that an old and a new implementation can exist in the same network? Okay, uh, Loa, you can go, but I want to draw your attention that uh, we're over time uh, at the moment. Uh, so here's here's one qu question. I don't really understand what Tony said because it's not until you check the version number you know how to handle the uh, reserved bits even if you say in the specification that uh, you, you need to check them you can't do that you 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 won't do that uh, until you actually have checked that it, it's not the old version uh, so well, I think I agree with what Stuart said, but here is my take from now. Uh, I think we can assign the MA label itself according to 4.1, and that we should say that, okay, we need further discussion on um, section 4.2 and what the bits in the LSE actually means. Uh, that wouldn't give us any, any trouble other than that people that are doing uh, experiments on and we need to be clear on that it's actually experiments it's not the standard yet but doing experiments on the LSE as it's actually formed today uh, must be prepared to change it in the future and we need to write that down somewhere Okay, uh, Tony, make it quick. So let's see if I can explain it one more time. If you keep version the reserve bits zero and a legacy implementation does not check, then everyone can continue to play with 4.2 as it stands today. If you want to define version one, then new implementations will check and they can treat reserved bits or different semantics and you would only use that if you're doing something that is not defined uh, under version zero. So you, may, you mean that, and that's a little bit different from versioning, but you mean that you can run, from a new implementation, you can run both version one and version, uh, version zero and version one. That's one way of looking at it, yes. 
Okay. Not sure if you want to answer that, but um, I have um, Stuart at the top. Oh, you lowered your hand and Rakesh then. Um, there is one more aspect that um, uh, we should also uh, think about is that um, it's not the, um, the BSPL only that's backwards compatible thing. It's also the op code. So if somebody wants to implement um, a feature using BSPL, they would use op code from the private use uh, space. And uh, this way, it's specific to the behavior or the functionality for that opcode that they are using. And it would not cause a backwards compatible issue because uh, uh, the behavior, they had to use that opcode. So that's just one uh, aspect of it. And second thing is that uh, more looking at uh, the figure two for the U bit. I think somebody said that we should move it to next to the S bit. This way we have consecutive in case we need to do extend NSL or whatnot, UB doesn't come into the way. So if um, that's one more thing that maybe we could improve on this one. Thanks. Okay, Jimmy, make it quick, please. I think we'll stop at 12. Okay, okay I think uh, my interpretation of the part of version number is uh, one role is to make the old implementation to be aware of that that package is a, a newer version which it cannot uh, simply pass based on the uh, old version encoding so that then maybe uh, something needed for the backward compatibility but if the bits are not passed or examined by the old version implementation that may be some problem that is my understanding Okay, Stuart, you want to? No, so I, I didn't use that, didn't you, take my uh, hand down earlier. So, um, supposing just for the sake of you know, the hypothesis that I decided to, in, to introduce a 6 bit opcode system instead of a 7 bit opcode system, a new implementation would know exactly what to do because it would see the version bit, it would know what the basic structure was again. An old version would see uh, bit 7 as a, still an opcode because it wasn't required to check the version according to Tony's sort of um, uh, um, semantics for versioning um, and then and, and thus could make a mistake. So um, I, 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 I remain unconvinced that um, Tony's interpretation of how uh, versioning should work is, is safe. Okay, I think uh, discussion on versioning is not concluded, but uh, we do need to stop at, uh, you know, we're over 10 minutes over and uh, so I will, I will stop the queue. Uh, Jimmy, if you want to, you know, make it quick, I will let you in, but uh, otherwise let's do it next time we meet. But before that, I think we had another uh, uh, item on our um, agenda we didn't we could not conclude but it's important that we at least converge on uh, the the meeting do we need to meet again uh, to talk about it to talk about the design team uh, convening again so uh, uh, Tony go ahead and take it quick please the fact that we've gone over time should be evidence enough we seem to like to talk. We seem to make progress when we talk. Talking is good, and, and it's much faster and more efficient than doing so via email. So I vote for bandwidth. I vote to continue the open DT. Stuart? I absolutely agree with, uh, with Tony. It's the only way to make adequate um, um, progress. We would have probably have never even understood how we, how we um, disagreed with each other. Um, um, and figure that, and, and, and which is a platform for understanding how do we move forward. We would never have done that in email, I don't think, in any sensible amount of time. So I'm all for it. Okay. Doha? Oh, yeah, I have an opinion on that also. Uh, one is that we still have issues that we started to discuss that we haven't concluded. 
uh, and we need the DT uh, possible to have meetings until the time that we actually concluded on those. those. And I think this is the m and label. We are close on that. It's the uh, uh, PSD, uh, B or not. And also, uh, what are the criteria for closing the uh, uh, the DT? And I actually prefer to have a, if we are to make a change, it should be that uh, we could call meetings on, if we need to have them rather than going uh, week by week. But for the time being, I think we still are, we still need to have meetings uh, every week to discuss those issues I mentioned. Okay. Stuart, um, anything? There's, there's at least one major contributor that can't get on, get to the meeting on its standard time slot. Um, do we need to investigate a moving meeting on a different day? Okay, that would require a, a poll or uh, uh, yeah. So we can we can discuss that in the next meeting. Um, Tony, go ahead. No matter what time you pick, you're always going to conflict with somebody's schedule. Um, so one of the things that was suggested was that we meet on two different days on alternating weeks. That way, uh -huh. everybody should at least make 50%, or at least there's a higher probability of make, making 50% of the meetings. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that as a method or meeting on a prime number in a set of intervals. Okay. All right. And I'll... Uh... Um, Stewart, do you want to add anything else? You still have your hand raised. Okay. Any objections to scheduling the meeting, uh, at least from the audience here? Like, raise your hand if you don't want to speak out. But in in anyone objecting to having the design team meeting? Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to stop recording now. Uh, unless we want to continue to discuss this um, but we're we've went over time really i don't see anyone raising their hand so i'll we're going ahead with uh, recording stop so